All right. We talked about the PR side of him and how he came across. And, and yeah. look, we can say this stuff doesn't matter, but I think it does matter because the reason people go to conferences and hang out with the mooch um, is because they want to appear. Right. Yeah. Roman, right, that, he that, likes the limelight, we have to say. Maybe, I mean, if he wanted a, he wants a certain kind of, of limelight. And yeah. it's right, it's right. He, he should communicate with fans. And I, I actually, I'm, I'm being totally serious here. I think he should be praised, not praised for that, but we should recognize that this is something important. This is something that I think a responsible owner does. Then we can get into the stuff that he actually said. However, when you go and you do this, and they must have a PR operation around him, right? There yeah, are certain so. things that you cannot do because you have to appear, I think, in a certain way. Appear like you know what you're doing. You know, be yeah. humble. You say like, about? I'm not... I'm not, you know, I didn't grow up with football necessarily as a fan. I don't pretend to know it, but we're learning quickly. And look, Todd Bowley's been three years ago. He took a very long, hard look at Tottenham Hotspur. I, I think I think that's an open secret yeah. now, right? So he's been looking at this for a while, and he's got smart people around him, at least on the business side. So then I don't understand how you can go for an interview that you know the whole world is going to see and make such basic elementary errors. Obviously, the single biggest one was when he starts rattling off all of Chelsea's academy products, all, all, all their homegrown players. And he mentions Kevin De Bruyne and Mohamed Salah. Now, in case you don't know, it's true. Both were at Chelsea under Jose Mourinho. Neither one played very much. Um, De Bruyne came from Genk. He had already played in the Champions League. Mohamed Salah came from Basel. Basel. He had already played in the Champions League. They were 21 and 22 at the time. They were great signings, great young players who obviously turned out to be phenomenal. Not from the Chelsea Academy. But most definitely not Chelsea Academy products, right? Most definitely. But you're in the process of trying to win over your own fans. Yes. You know, you've bought the club 100 days ago. You're right now <laughs> trying to impress them or convince them or get them on your side, whatever way you want to put it. And you come up with something like this. You know, you, you should not really care what the media are saying about him or what, you know, what, what we think or whatever. But the fans are the most important things in here. And he comes up with something like that, that makes him look ridiculous to his own fans. Uh, if you're a Chelsea fan, you're thinking like, but how can you talk about the club you just bought, my club, in this way, not even knowing the players that we produce at our academy and the ones that we don't produce. I mean... I, I'll, I'll give you another one, which really surprised me. Um, and look, this might seem minor. And obviously, we talk about pronunciations foreign languages and whatever else. Not everybody speaks several languages. I get that, right? But you live in the US where there's a huge Hispanic population, right? Maybe he doesn't speak Spanish, fine, right? But he's heard people speak Spanish. He owns the freaking Dodgers yeah, who are in LA, say, which yeah. have an enormous Hispanic yeah. uh, uh, population. He spent most of the summer in Barcelona, right? Where we're talking about yeah. Marcos Alonso and Frankie de Jong and whatever, and Alba and whatever, right? Did you notice what he called Barcelona's academy? <laughs> La Messiah? Now, this to me suggests, and when he goes to the Camp Nou, when he goes to Barcelona, you know that he's talking to Barcelona people, and obviously, what do Barcelona people like to talk about? They like to talk about La Masia, and rightly so, yeah. right? But how do you call it La Messiah? It might have been Messiah when Messi was coming through. You know, I, I don't, I, this to me, this to me it tells me two things. One is he doesn't really pay attention, right? To, to 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 how other people and that's fine. Yeah. But the other one is he must have used this term more than once. I'm sure it wasn't the or first someone, time he said it. Or someone told him more but, than once. Or someone you know. Well, just, to me, that. says nobody when when he goes out and he calls it La Messiah, he's surrounded by people around him who are like, uh, boss. But by the way, no biggie. But it's La Masia, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Either you say it properly or don't say it all because otherwise, well, are, is he surrounded by lick spittles who are <laughs> afraid to correct him? Um, that's another thing where he was let down. I mean, they have a PR yes. operation. I am surprised that nobody prepared him. Yeah, me too. A little more for Oh, he was badly prepared otherwise. Yeah. Um, one other thing that he said, which to me is slightly problematic, because problematic because it shows that it makes me wonder how familiar you are with Chelsea's own recent history, right? Um, so he comes out and he says, I, I'm paraphrasing here, but we need to think of our homegrown players as academy products rather than academy players. And the implication being that they can be monetized because this is in the context of sending to other clubs. That's or right. Two things to that. First of all, there already is a lot of pushback into taking like 
you know, 15, 16, 17 year old boys and saying like, oh, like, you know, you're an asset on my balance sheet. We're going to buy and sell you. I know that's the reality of how the yeah. business works. Not necessarily great optics and saying like, oh, yeah, I'll we'll take some some, you know, African kid or German kid here and like I'll make money off them. You know, it's not I, you know, there, there's a balance there. And I think how you talk about it matters. But secondly, this is exactly what Chelsea have been doing. So when you talked about changing the clubs, breaking down walls at Chelsea, yeah. this is actually one area that Chelsea have done better than almost any other club in Europe. Since 2015, Chelsea made nearly 200 million pounds. You know, that, that works out at, at, at what, like 25, 30 million pounds a year yeah. by selling academy products to other clubs, right? Yeah. Whether we're Fikayo Tamori, Tammy Abraham, I mean, the, the, the list goes on and on, mm. right? So, well, you want to go even further than that. You want to do it better. You want Chelsea to be better at something that they've already they been already better at doing than <laughs> almost any other big club in Europe, right? Or, but it's, it's, some of the, his, the choice of words in, in that conference I struggled with. It's like when, when the Moosh said to him, oh, but people say you know nothing about football or soccer. How can you be a success? And he said, yeah, I know nothing. But it's like a business. If you put the right people in the right position, then you're going to be successful. Okay, we know football is a business. However, this is a football club. There, there is no community behind a business. There's yeah. no, like, like all of the business that made him so rich, there's no community behind. There's no people who who've been loving a football club for 50 years, 60 years, all their family going years and years and years and years. And I understand yeah, you have to put the best in the best position. It's the same for everybody. But I, I thought that his choices of words were really strange at times. I, the whole way he communicated, even like he, we referred his frustration to dealing in different currencies and like, oh, you know, the, <laughs> you, you sell players in pounds, but you buy them in euros. I... I'm like, wait, I'm assuming you've done business abroad where people it's have simple, different, like, different currencies, right? I don't, it just, it, did, it didn't come, he just, just did not come or, come across well at all on that. Yeah. One thing um, that he did say, which, you know, when he was asked about the Super League, and by the way, credit to the Mooch for pushing him on yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. When he asked them about the Super League, and first he says, well, the Champions League right now has got a lot of components of, of, of the Super League. Um, and so he says, it's not something that we're talking about now, which isn't the same as saying we are not, yeah. we are against the Super League. And then he asked them like, so is that a hard no on the Super League? And he said, and I'm going to praise Boldy for being honest. He says, I never give hard no's. I'm keeping my options open. I think that was intelligent. Yeah. You know, I, if you're not, I, I prefer that honesty from an owner saying that one day if the climate change, if this is what Chelsea fans want, if it's necessary for Chelsea survival, we are going to consider this. Yeah. I prefer that honesty than some of the other liars and charlatans who've yeah, been in charge. Yeah. So we give points for Bully on, on that one. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.